I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Area for August the 2nd, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the Flatex pressure and mine alone. If you're going to make any decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. We've got several systems active across the East Pacific and the Atlantic today. We're going to briefly touch on the East Pacific systems. We've got Hurricane Carlotta here now moving into cooler sea surface temperatures. It's still intensifying some. It still has some room to intensify a little bit, but the 26 degree isotherm runs about like that. Uh, you can sort of see the transition uh, to that. If you look here, we've got stratocumulus clouds on the northern side of this line, uh, highlighting those cooler sea surface temperatures. And this will be crossing this line over the next day, and once it does so, it will weaken. But the first hurricane of the slow running season uh, but we're not done because we have two other systems to watch. We have Invest 96E, a low pressure system developing south of Mexico, a forecast to move generally towards the west northwest and move away from the Mexican coastline. No direct impacts are expected there, but the system is likely to become a storm. As you can see, 90% development odds from the NHC on this one. And this could become a hurricane as well behind Carlotta uh, before it reaches the cooler waters uh, like Carlotta is right now. We've also got Invest 95E. This is a broad, or not broad low, but a small low sitting well southwest of Carlotta and could become a brief tropical cyclone. But this one again, similar to 96E, is staying out to sea and will only be of interest to shipping out there. All right, so now we're going to move to the Atlantic as we have potential tropical cyclone 4 over Cuba this afternoon. And if you're unfamiliar with the term potential tropical cyclone, uh, by definition, that is a system that is likely to bring tropical storm conditions to land areas, but is not yet a tropical cyclone. Uh, so, for example, this system is forecast to bring some tropical storm force winds to Florida within the next couple of days. But as of right now, it's still a tropical disturbance over Cuba. And this basically allows NHC just to issue tropical storm watches and warnings ahead of time so that they're not issuing them right as the conditions are happening if a system does form, say, just offshore of a land area. Now, this system is sitting, like I said, right over Cuba today, and we're seeing some indication that the system is trying to get closer to developing into a tropical storm. This is a current close-up visible loop with this, and you can see that we have southerly winds coming into eastern Cuba, turning into easterly winds north of there and south of the Bahamas, and then coming back south into the Caribbean near or over central Cuba. So we sort of have this wave pocket about like that, uh, over the landmass, and this system is looking, from what I can tell, pretty good. We have some pretty good convection going off. It's not completely void of it. It's not being destroyed by the mountainous terrain of Cuba. Uh, but also, if you look here near Grand Cayman, you'll see in the low level clouds, it's very weak, but we have some starting westerly winds on the south side of this, and this is important as when you get these westerly winds developing, you can begin to close off an area of low pressure within the wave pocket. And eventually with sustained convection, that can end up developing into a tropical cyclone. And we can confirm this further if we look at the surface observations from Cuba, Jamaica, and the Cayman Islands. You can see here's your southeasterly winds on the eastern side of the wave coming back down to the Caribbean as northeasterly winds. And here's Grand Cayman and Station in Jamaica showing weak westerly winds showing a broad low like this. Now, I wouldn't say it's fully closed right now, but given this trend, this is good for uh, developing a tropical cyclone as uh, it seems to be well on its way to making that happen. And the current expectation is that the system will be able to do that fairly quickly once it does exit the coast of Cuba and get into the Gulf of Mexico this weekend. You can see what's favoring that. If you look at the water vapor imagery, which shows uh, the upper low wind and you can see that we have a expanding area of high pressure directly over the storm and this is creating a low shear environment and this is forecast to persist as it enters into the eastern gulf of mexico you can see this on the gfs up a little wind plot by sunday morning uh, saturday evening really uh, as it's here southwest of florida we have this very healthy upper level uh, high sitting right over it and this is aiding a low shear environment, but also aiding outflow, which helps the thunderstorms uh, breathe in a way and allows it to continuously burst that convection over that center, which can help it to intensify. Now, the good news is here for Florida, uh, the system will not have a lot of time to intensify before it comes ashore. If we look at the GFS model, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly map. 
And you can see that this is by Sunday afternoon and the system's already on shore on the model. Now, there is a little bit of wiggle room and this is a little bit of an unfortunate approach angle similar to what we had with Barrel uh, last month when it was approaching Mexico and Texas. Uh, the approach angle means that if it's a little bit further west or east, it can change the, the landfall spot much by just a small difference in the short term. Uh, like on the GFS here, it's a little bit further east, a little bit closer to the coast of Florida. So it ends up coming in here south of Tampa. And we don't really have, you know, even two days of the system sitting over the Gulf of Mexico. But we've had some models try and show the system being a little bit further west. And it allows maybe an extra 12 hours, maybe a little bit more over the Gulf of Mexico, which could allow a little bit more intensification. Now, the good news is, this isn't a lot of time in general, so we're not likely to see this system, you know, rapidly intensify in the Gulf of Mexico. But if it does, you know, stay further offshore before coming in, so if say if it's further west, that could increase potential for the system getting near hurricane intensity. Uh, I'd say that's really the high end here in this part of the Gulf of Mexico is, say, a high-end tropical storm, maybe low-end hurricane if everything goes right. I don't see the system intensifying rapidly. And the most likely scenario here is, say, a mid-grade tropical storm coming into Florida. Now, uh, the system is forecast to then come east as this trough over the U.S. is going to pick it up. And this is forecast to bring it into the region of the uh, South and North Carolina coastline. Now, the Gulf of Mexico track is a bit of importance here as well if it is further west it could end up staying on shore a little bit more and it could end up just not coming over the gulf stream really at all and it could just stay over georgia south carolina and north carolina and that would result in a storm that doesn't really intensify all too much but on the other hand if it does take a gfs like track and comes offshore the gulf stream waters are of course very warm for this time of year and if we look at the upper level pattern this upper high does remain, and we actually get a little bit of a jet interaction taking shape on the base of this trough. And if it is over water, this could absolutely allow the system to intensify as it moves up the coastline of North and South Carolina. And you can see that happen with the GFS. It actually gets a little bit deep, going down to 974 millibars on this run. But of course, there is, like I said, a bit of variability there. If it does, say, go right over land, it could easily just stay a weak tropical storm as it moves through the region. So there's a little bit of uncertainty there. Now, one thing you may have picked out there is that the system did slow down on this model as it came towards the North Carolina coastline. This is an expectation uh, by current forecast guidance. You can see that as the system comes towards North Carolina, this trough does still leave the scene pretty quickly. This is still a similar thing to what we've had than a couple days ago, but this allows this ridge to nose in a little bit more, and this imparts a little bit more of a northerly or northeasterly flow upon the storm, which may slow it down a bit as it comes towards the coast of North Carolina and South Carolina. And of course, there is some variability there as well. You know, where does the storm go? It's a bit too far out right now to say exactly where the storm may go, but it's certainly something to watch here in South and North Carolina, regardless if it stays onshore or goes offshore. Because even remember, if a system does come ashore and stalls ashore, it could still be pulling tropical moisture off the Gulf Stream, and that could lead to a lot of flooding over this region. You don't always need a strong storm to get a significant impact. And you can see the current track guidance uh, here showing sort of uh, that, that general track that I've outlined, having this come around the west coast of Florida. Right now, the consensus is, say, from Cedar Key to Tampa on this current track guidance. And you can see them coming offshore and just remaining off the Carolina coast, but slowing down a bit. So you can see some of these numbers are getting a bit closer together, indicating that slowdown that we're expecting here. Here's the current five-day forecast from the NHC. You can see it becoming a tropical cyclone by tomorrow afternoon once it passes the Florida Keys and intensifying uh, some before making landfall in the Florida Big Bend region. You can see as well the uh, overall region of uncertainty going from, say, around Tampa to Apalachicola Bay in the panhandle of Florida. And again, there's still, you know, 
questions on exactly how far north to south is it going to be when it gets to the Carolinas. But right now, the middle ground is for the system to remain a tropical storm as it comes just barely offshore of the Carolinas. And this is certainly something to watch up here. Make sure you're staying closely tuned to the National Hurricane Center advisories as the system does come your way. And we'll have more videos as we go throughout the weekend and into early next week on this. You can also see that we have tropical storm watches for the Florida Keys, a tropical storm warning for the uh, southwestern Florida coast, and a tropical storm watch. Looks like just north of Fort, uh, Fort Myers, all the way up to maybe Cedar Key in the Big Bend region of Florida. And we'll likely see this get extended further northwest as time goes on. And say by tomorrow, we'll probably have a tropical storm warning here, for areas including Tampa and Cedar Key there. Now, this system, like I mentioned, is not just going to be, you know, a wind impact. We're going to be also dealing with rainfall. You can see as the system comes up the Florida Panhead or the Florida Peninsula, we could be seeing widespread rainfall of 6 to 8 inches, locally higher totals of 8 to 12. And we could, in the Carolinas, be looking at the storm producing a lot of rainfall, especially along the coastline at this time, with 6 to 8 inches being a, a good possibility here for areas like Savannah, Charleston, and Wilmington. But keep in mind, this may shift some over the next few days, especially if we we do get the system to stay further inland and you could potentially shift some of this higher rainfall total here of 8 to 12 inches over parts of the coastline and inland areas and now for florida the rainfall is not just the only issue we do have some storm surge concerns and i would love to see if there's any changes and there are you can see from a uh, Card Sound Bridge all the way to Bonita Beach, we could see storm surge rises about one to three feet above normally dry ground. But from Charlotte Harbor all the way up to, say, around Cedar Key, two to four feet of storm surge. And for Fort Myers Bay or Charlotte Harbor, that would be in Tampa Bay, two to four inches of inundation within those bay areas. And of course, as this forecast continues to get closer into time for the rest of the Florida uh, panhandle and big bend region and also the southeast u.s will get storm surge forecasts for those regions so again make sure you're staying closely tuned to forecasts on the system as it does progress that's all that i've got for today stay safe in cuba and florida as the system comes through and like i said i'll have more videos about the weekend into next week on the system that's it for now thanks for watching